Hello, everybody. This is Megan. And this is Alana. And welcome to Tea Time Crimes. Good morning, good afternoon. How you doing? Good evening. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. It's like we're strangers and we've just met for the first time. Yes. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> it's going great. So the other day, my son, who's five, asks to talk to me privately. So we go outside and he sits me down and he says, okay, you know I don't have a brother or a sister, right? Uh oh. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to explain to him like how babies are made and where they come from and how come I'm not producing another one. But I'm just like, uh huh. He goes, and you know, I don't have many cousins, right? Uh -uh. I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm going to have to explain why my brother only has two kids. And I go, uh huh. And he goes, so can I get a ventriloquist dummy? What? Yeah. And I don't know about you. Well, no. well, we'll get there. I don't know about you, but those scare the crap out of me. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I, I mean, you might as well put me in a room with clowns and porcelain dolls and a ventriloquist <laughs> and just throw away the key. That is not <laughs> happening. And so now I'm – because the whole time I thought this was going to be a only child conversation, so I was like yeah. prepped for that. And then he switches to ventriloquist dummy, and I'm so – I'm like, how, I don't want that in my house. I'm, I'm like equal parts grossed just out. I hope he forgets. Well, that's what I'm hoping too. So then I say, well, maybe for your birthday, hoping maybe he'll forget. And he starts crying. So then he brings Brad into it. And Brad says, well, why do you want a ventriloquist dummy? And he says, so it'll come alive and be my friend. Oh, no. What are you guys watching? Pinocchio or something? <laughs> yeah. So now I have like a gaping open chest wound, right? I'm like hurt to the, I'm, oh, no. Maybe we need to look, maybe, maybe we, need, maybe I can't have another kid. Maybe we need to adopt. Like I'm trying to like, that. but then I realized what he's watched is there was like a Halloween kid show where a ventriloquist dummy came alive and then terrorized the family in a kid okay. way. Not, and no, in nobody a, was murdered. Did you say in a cute way? No, in like a kid appropriate way, you oh. know, like pulled pranks and stole stuff and then blamed it, like got the kids in trouble. And like and torture then, people. Yeah, and then did these maniacal laughs, things like that. And so I'm like, wait, maybe you're just like plotting against us. Maybe this isn't like what's happening. And then we kind of are like waiting to like, well, let's wait and see. And then yesterday he's right next to me and he goes, ah, I just really want an evil ventriloquist dummy. Oh, and I said, evil? And he goes, oh, oh, no, it'll be nice, mommy. And then he just runs away. So no, wait, that's... but why don't we connect this to the other story that he wrote and you never showed me the animated version. So thanks for that. Yeah. He Not started writing you. scary stories and they are terrifying. Yeah. You don't, you and Brad don't end up well in those stories. <laughs> well, he doesn't name us, but the mom and the dad are ghosts. They are ghosts. <laughs> and so that paired with the vent evil ventriloquist dummy, oh. I'm terrified. Yeah, so I don't know. It's like neck and neck are in the polls right now. Whether like, do we want another kid or do we want a ventriloquist dummy in the house? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, that's a tough choice. Terrifying. It, but if okay, if any of my family is listening, especially the grandparents, do not send me a ventriloquist dummy. Okay, don't do it because if I'm gonna have to live with it, then I'm sure as heck gonna be the one who gets the reward points, right? Like, I, I have to get something good out of it. I'm not going to just be sitting here with that creepy thing in my house having to pretend that it did stuff the rest of the day. I mean, it's kind of like the elf on the shelf, I think. Yeah, I guess. You know? But elf on the shelf doesn't scare the crap out of me. No, it's not. Well, I guess it could be creepy, but it's not. And he wants the legitimate one, not not like the cute Sesame Street ones. The S Sesame Street ventriloquist? Well, they're kind of like, like if you search ventriloquist on Amazon, which we have done at this point, there's like a lot of like things that look like Muppets 
or oh, like I Sesame see. Street characters. I could do and that. And I wouldn't mind those. But he wants like the hardcore wooden mouth. Can he ones. even say that word? Ventriloquist. That's a, that's a very like hard that. word. He says ventriloquist. Yeah, Man. he can say it. I think I'd be a worse parent than you. I would just ignore him and pretend he never said that. Yeah, well, you would be surprised how he will hold on to something. I'm hoping it blows over, but... I'm worried he's just going to be like, yes, my birthday. I know. What if he's going to want a dummy theme party? Like a ventriloquist party. What if he has a a ventriloquist? Yeah, Yeah, you are. This is going to happen. Does anybody like ventriloquist dummies besides I know I am pretty sure one of our special listeners who has given me a tea in the past, she likes the puppets and those kind of things. She's, you know, grew up in the theater and I bet you she would like it. One time a puppet painted her portrait. It was actually pretty amazing. There's a big difference between puppets. But that's what they are. But they're so thick, they're wooden, and that's what's scary. Like with the wooden eyebrows. Puppets are wooden. But they have like a lot of cloth and like funny hair, and they're animals. They're not like little humans. I don't know. There's a whole world of puppets that I just don't want to go into, but I know exists. That's true. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes puppets have like like porcelain faces. Yes. There's all kinds. Like actually that friend who, another listener who moved to Vermont recently, there was a whole thing there where there was like they would have these nights of puppet nights and like you go into their big barn where there'd be puppets everywhere it's like no nope. hard nope nope and oh yeah hard I mean, nope. You're, you're not even going in there during the day <laughs> no <laughs> no uh-uh uh-uh I'm, out. Uh-uh. I'm gonna stay at home i'll stay with a cat and a fire and a book and you go yeah. with your puppet your puppet party no thank you <laughs> yeah there you go and i'm you know like i know I'm not even fully convinced, like, I'm not buying a one on eBay or anything because I'm not fully convinced it isn't haunted. Like, I... Oh, it do not the, go through eBay. Right? Scares the crap out You'll of me. You'll die. Like, yeah. I was like, well, this is how my story ends. Yep. So, I mean, believe it or not, there's not a huge market for this. They weren't, like, readily ac- accessible. I there actually am one. surprised. There was only two on Amazon, and they were expensive. And I was like, I don't think... I think Etsy is probably the way to go. Oh no, then it's handmade and you don't know what's happened to it. It's been cursed. Stop. Okay. They put a soul here. into it and then. Okay. They... <laughs> okay. That's enough. That's I enough. have a better story that I forgot to say last time, which I think what? I told I texted you a little bit about it when I was on that trip for a week. So I, I was I was really desperate for churros. We were in Mexico and I wanted churros so badly. And I want was looking for them everywhere. And finally one of my coworkers finds them. And brings a huge bag of them back to the hotel. Like, must have been 50 in there. And so I may have eaten eight and a half of them at once. And my coworkers measured it and said that I ate seven feet in churros. And I'll never be able to live it down. So I just wanted to share that story. You told me you ate 20. Seven and a half really pales in comparison to the original. Seven and a half feet, eight and a half churros. Oh, well, still, it's not. I never texted you 20. You, you Marco Polo me that you ate about 20 churros. Oh, that's how it felt, maybe. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was, it was too much. It was too much. And now I have a badge of honor. <sighs> and this disgrace. is classic Alana, though. She no. has the tiniest, yes, you have the no, tiniest anybody, belly. anybody, you would have died if you did this. I wouldn't have died. I mean, you're alive. I think I would have survived. Metaphorically, ding dong. <laughs> well, I don't know that this is. I don't feel that death by churros is a big metaphor that floats around the world. But you always do this, though. You always like I'm so hungry. Then you have one little bite, and you're like, oh, I'm so full, my belly. Yeah. And then your belly and always then I hurts. I kept going and yeah, going. Yeah, welcome and going. Welcome to my world. And it was really bad. Uh, well, do you feel like? Do you have? A, is your craving satisfied? Yes. Mission accomplished. It was oversatisfied. I felt like hell the next day. It was not a great experience. Gross. Maybe a quick ventriloquist show would have helped cheer you up. Maybe. All right. What do you got for a tea review today? Well, I have Riddle's Book and Tea Company, which is a, Cute. a nerdy 
book and tea company, they do like bookmarks and uh, make teas and stuff like that. And this one's called Book Hangover because I Mm. just finished a book that you would hate that I loved so much and it's over. And I tried to read it as slowly as possible, but I got to the end. Do you want to name what the book is for people? Yeah, who like it's it? uh, Legends and Lattes. It's it's the tagline is high fantasy, low stakes. So essentially, like this warrior hangs up her sword and is like retiring, and she opens up a cafe and starts serving like coffee and stuff to the to the town. And it's really really wholesome <laughs> and cozy, and I loved every moment of it. So if you uh, enjoy, we have. Fantasy, you would really enjoy it. It's a great one. This is, okay, a bold hazelnut blend to recuperate after a book bender. And it's this cute little bag that I will post on the gram. So it's a hazelnut tea I could smell already. Is it a black tea? Mm -hmm. It's a black tea. There's a bunch of different, it's a blend. There's like a Assam and Ceylon and stuff. Okay. Smells like hazelnut. Whew, it's like a really deep breath there. Mmm, creamy. Did you add cream to it? I had a, my little dash of milk, but I think the hazelnut flavor just mm-hmm. makes it feel creamier. Yeah, um, kind of like that. It out. That coffee. What is that? There isn't there a creamer brand that will do like different flavors. This is how I imagine coffee that would mate. taste. Yeah. So it doesn't last long on the tongue. It kind of jumps in, and then it's like, oh, I'm done, and like kind of vanishes as you will once you get the ventriloquist dummy <sighs> and disappears. But it's just like it's just like a, hey, what's up for a moment and then fades away. But the, the warmth is still there. Mm. I love the flavor. It's very creamy and comforting after being done with a lovely book. So I'm going to give this a creamy thumbs up, which sounds worse the more I... When I said it out loud, wow. I wonder if you get there. I'm going to stay there. <laughs> Would you like to edit it? No. Still no time. edits allowed. Okay. All right then. Okay. Regrets and creamy thumbs. Stop. <laughs> Stop Regrets? It. You're yes. doing it. <sighs> Look. Dude. I got to okay. commit, okay? Uh, <laughs> you're the one who has these rigid rules. I, I'm cool. Cool to change stuff. But I do recommend this tea and the book. So go for it. All right. Today, I'm really excited about today. But am I excited about today? Well, I think, I don't, I mean, I think you're going to love to hate it. Okay. Okay. What's I'm, the time period? You know, hold on. Yeah, I'm just going to jump right in. I'm not, I'm going to just bury the lead here and just jump right in and let you take this journey with me. Okay. <sighs> okay. Better be past the 60s. I mean, earlier. <laughs> So Catherine Hayes was born in 1690. Yeah. Yeah, you like that. In Birmingham, England. It's hard, it's hard for me to say because I really want to say Birmingham, but it's not. Alabama. Yeah. Birmingham. So she is born into a poor family. All they said was that her last name was Hall. Oh. And they did, however, describe her mother as wicked and adulterous, Ooh. which I don't think that's probably a high bar in the 1600s no she probably showed her ankles oh my god i wrote that in my notes really (laughs) i wrote what'd she do show an ankle (laughs) you know i was thinking real quick though i was thinking of places like birmingham or new york and i was like how uncreative are these people when they're coming to these shores and naming towns but i guess like it is a lot of pressure. And so the easy way to go is just naming it after something that already exists. And maybe you get brownie points with like the governor of that town overseas. Anyways, you may yep. continue. Yep, thank you. So, right, her mother has described unfavorably. They also, the rest of that sentence, I don't fully understand what they're trying to say, but the rest of the sentence, and this is a quote from the Ip- Ipswich Journal. <laughs> So it says her mother was wicked and adulterous, who dropped her a branch of her lustful embraces <laughs> near Birmingham. <laughs> Wait, does that mean she gave birth? Dropped, dropped, dropped her? her. Catherine? Yeah, did she abandon her or did she have birth, give birth to her? I don't know. Anyway, Catherine is in the world. It just sounds like she's a bastard. Well, it said her father's name was Hall. 
Anyway, at 15, Catherine is on the move. She leaves home to follow a group of army men that have come through her small town, and she leaves home to She's going to give them the red light special? (laughs) Yes, yes. She becomes a sex worker, like, in their house, like, just for them. So, I I mean, not a lot. There's That's all it says about her background. So, I mean, we're about to get into some weird stuff, so I just want to pause and say I'm willing to bet Catherine did not have an easy – Love filled fifteen years before um, no. she starts being on the record. It was probably brutal and yeah. not great. Yep, but we don't know what happened. So she is living with these guys. They're uh, room and board. You know, she's surviving. Eventually, they kind of encourage her to move on. I guess Thanks. they're they're done. So she goes back and forth between being a sex worker or a domestic servant. And she actually lands a job as a domestic servant around the age of 16 at the Hayes Farm. So John and Sarah Hayes have a lot of property. They have a farm that they run, and they have two sons. You see where Uh -uh. this is going. Yeah. And so the oldest son, who's also named John, I will call him John from now on, he falls in love with Catherine. It's said that John and Catherine had two children out of wedlock, which is surprising at that time. But also I mentioned that because that's a long time that they're dating. It's yeah. at least eight, 18 months if they had yeah. two children out of out of wedlock. And one of the children was a boy and was said to have been put in a basket and dropped. What? A, not dropped like sorry, I paused weird. Like placed on a doorstep of somebody else in town. The like they're not keeping these children. And I don't I don't know what happened to the second one. But they don't have these children. Birth control is not very widely spread at that point. Yeah, it's not going (laughs) great. So John still wants to marry Catherine. But they got rid of their kids. Mr. Hayes is objecting. I'm not sure if he's objecting because she's from a poor family, if because she's had two babies out of wedlock. She's a sex worker. Who knows? Even though it is with his own son. I don't know if maybe, maybe he's sensing something. Like, maybe he's got a little bit of intuition about this lady. Uh oh. But she threatens to hurt herself. And so he kind of backs off. And then John and Catherine run away and get married in secret in 1713. Okay. Do they get their kids back? No. Kids are gone. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. Now, I don't fully understand what went down on their wedding night, but it sounds intense. First off, the paper reports that Catherine paper- fell into. What? It's reporting on their wedding night? <laughs> After the fact. Once okay. Catherine gets into some of her shenanigans, they start looking into <laughs> Catherine. It's reported that she fell into the water and John had to save her and he saved her life. The water? You like a river? The water. I don't know. Just said the water. Oh, well, so, we don't know. <laughs> we we're not sure. It could have been a puddle for all I know. Maybe her ankle <laughs> hey, was at risk. You can drown in what? Like three inches of water, right? That's what right. they say. It's- Okay, so that happens. So crisis averted. <laughs> then <laughs> Catherine, who's still in contact with her old army buddies, is oh. like, hey, could you come swing by and kidnap John for me? What? And so they, they kidnap John, and they try to coerce him into joining the military. You know, I just love that they're buds, Catherine and the old army guys. Like, That's that could have been like. a really bad situation for her but it, she feels like she could reach out to them and like there are resources and commit a crime well, so yeah, you that that's she, helpful for you you're like oh that's just so great just, she can nice. call them and kidnap it, it's it, nice for her because like imagine it, being in that situation but no, these, these stop, guys no. must respect her to a degree because they're gonna come no. and help her out of a tough situation they're not trying to help her they're kidnapping her husband and torturing By her him. request to mess with them. They're all drunk. They don't know what's going on. I'm just saying. It's, They're it's pretty with cool. Them. It's not at all. It's not at all. And then I, I think he part. ends up enlisting somehow, and the father has to show up and pay 60 pounds to get him released back to the farm. And he tells <laughs> Catherine, get it together, okay? You're a mess. Get it together. And then he gives – Mr. Hayes gives them a cottage on the farm. Oh, that seems like a weird thing to do after that happens. Probably to keep an eye on him would be my guess. Maybe just kick her out forever is what I They're would do. They're still married. Well. They're married. Oh, no. It is... She fell down a hill. 
for well, so you're you want Mr. Hayes to murder Catherine? That's your go to. <laughs> you're just saying how nice it is that she's got the friends right in her pocket. I the both tra- both facts could be true. Okay, quit. So <laughs> <laughs> John and Catherine are living in this cottage. Apparently. It's widely reported that this whole time Catherine's having multiple affairs, which I don't know how you meet men on your family's farm. But Yeah, that is a little weird. Maybe she goes into town like Belle from Beauty and the Beast and is singing and twirling in fountains. Even still, I feel like it's probably low inventory. Yeah, so probably. girl has some game. There's going to be a lot of teeth missing for sure. <laughs> that was it. nothing to do with it. Early 1700s in Britain. Good luck to you. It's like Catherine. Catherine is just she's something else. Yeah, she is. So she's, you know, she wants some more excitement in her life. This cottage life, you know, village Tinder is not cutting it. So she begs John (laughs) to move (laughs) to move to London. And after London. Years, he finally agrees. So in 1719, they moved to London. That's such a bad idea because he's losing the protection of his family. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. John becomes pretty successful in London. He's a hard worker. So he starts as a coal merchant and then he's running a pawn shop and eventually wow. he starts lending out money. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's doing well enough that he can have some help and he can also – he also gives Catherine a pretty generous allowance. Mm-hmm which she uses to throw constant parties. And so he's like, hey, could you pump the brakes on all these parties? And she says, no, actually, I'm going to need more money. (laughs) We're ramping it up. He says, okay, well, I'm going to give you less money. And she does not love that. She cut off his toes. That's not working for her. So then she decides that she's going to start taking in borders, which is pretty common, right? You take in borders. Yeah, yeah. It's a little extra cash. Definitely. And so she takes in a man named Thomas Billings. He's a tailor. He's oh. 19 years old. Pretty young to be a tailor. And he starts living with the Hayes. What? Pretty young to be a tailor. You think you'd be an apprentice at that point. And then maybe when you're 25, you could be named a tailor. No, I think you start being an apprentice pretty young when you're oh, okay. like, like 14. It, oh, I guess it is back in the day. Anyway, Catherine starts up an affair. Yeah. Shocker. Didn't see that coming. Obviously. At this point, <laughs> Catherine's, it, you know, the dates are a little wonky. It's She's probably 35-ish, 36-ish. Oh, wow. okay. But that's not really what I have a problem with. What I have a problem with is that Thomas Billings is actually Catherine's son, the one from the basket. Nope. No. No. And she knows no. this. No. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Please rate, review, and subscribe, <laughs> and we'll <laughs> next week. Thank you for listening. No. Goodbye. Whoa. Yeah. Candy. It, sh- yeah. This is even worse than candy. Yeah, I know it is. Throwback to our uh, previous episode. Yeah, so she knows this. I. I <sighs> so anyway, then no. pretty, re- pretty quickly after, a second man, also named Thomas, so I'll be going by last names at this point. Thomas Wood. Told you. Creative names here, people. Come on. <laughs> he is a butcher and he needs work and he has just moved to town. So he moves in with the Hayes household as a boarder. Three some. Here we come. And Catherine starts up an affair with him. So just what? to recap, right? We've got Catherine living in this house with her husband, <sighs> with Billings. Who she's her having son. an affair with, who is her illegitimate son, <clears throat> and with Thomas Wood, who is a butcher and just a random dude. Maybe maybe a cousin. We don't know. He probably has big arms. <sighs> I don't know. There was no there are no pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the lack of photography plays a big part in this case. Oh boy. Good foreshadowing. Okay. So she is, you know, best buds with the Toms. And Ugh. yeah, mm-hmm. and so she starts trying to pit Wood and Billings against John, saying that he's incredibly mean, that they'd be better off without him, <gasps> that things would be easier John's if he was gone. Die. You know, life insurance or life know, insurance, not really, not really life insurance, Gateway. but you know, we get his estate, right? We get all his money and we get his business, and he can just be out of the picture. 
So on March 1st of 1726, the two Thomases take John out drinking. And they're placing bets on who can drink the most. And they're hoping that they lose. Yeah. John walked right into this. And so John, they get home and they continue drinking. And John is very drunk. And he goes into his bedroom and promptly just passes out. He's snoring away. Yeah. Billings goes into the bedroom and hits him over the head with an axe. The first blow doesn't kill him. Oh, so there's some on, noises. Guys. He's asleep. Yeah. He should have gone through the neck. There's some noises. And so the woman who lives upstairs, I don't know if it's like an apartment or she's another boarder, but a woman oh, who like lives upstairs comes down and says, hey, what's all the noise? And Catherine's like, oh, we're just merrymaking. Sorry. We've just been drinking. And, you know, don't worry about it. And just tells them that they're partying. So she goes back upstairs. More like murder making. Yeah. So John is now dead. Was there another blow? Yeah, there were a few. Okay. So the group wants John to be unidentifiable. Oh, no. Wood comes in as the butcher. No. And, and cuts off his head. Oh, my God. Uh, Got to really hack at that. What does he use? I don't want to know. They wrap it in cloth. Then Billings and Wood put it in a bucket and head to the river. <gasps> I don't know, but I don't think buckets are great at sinking. There's a hole in this bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. <laughs> you need to change that to there's, there's a head, a head in, this in this bucket. <laughs> dear John, there's a head. Okay, stop it. This boy, this is a real human being from a million years ago. I know, ago. I know. Be respectful. But I'm more picking on them because it's like, really a bucket? Like, isn't that just going to buoy it up, guys? Buckets kind of just hang out. Anyway, they go and they throw it. I'm not, it's not <laughs> clear if it's, if it stays with the bucket or if it even makes it to the water. Some sources say what? it just... It didn't even, they didn't throw it far enough and it just made it to the dirt. Okay, guys, we really need to work on this. Bury the head. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So they've done that. Then the next day. Wait, where's the body? They have, they have the body still. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Why? So no. no. Wood goes, does the second round and he dismembers it. Oh, God. And then they murder. throw that, bo the body, like those pieces oh. into a pond. Body parts float. So, as you might imagine, the head is quickly discovered. Yeah. Because I don't even think it made it to the water. Oh, my God. Okay. And the body parts are just going to float on to the top. The skull has several skull fractures and cuts, but nobody knows who the victim is. So? Oh, they accomplish what they want. So someone decides hey, let's put the head on a wooden stake and we'll place it in St. Margaret's Churchyard for identification. Oh, my God. That is so disturbing. What's happening? Because they don't have photographs. Okay. But maybe Paint a, a sketch. picture. Let's try that. Maybe a little sketch would have hap happened for you. Sorry, little Timmy. Don't mind the dismembered head as we file in the church. It's not really a unique name. But anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so John's head is now just on a stake in the middle. Meanwhile, Catherine just happens to be kind of cleaning house and going through all the paperwork that John has and making sure to collect on his debts Okay, at that moment, right? So she has the most money. So three different people actually recognize John, but not in the first six days. So after six days, no, some I genius quit. was like, hey, do you think we should take the head down and preserve it? Uh, so they take it down and they put it in them. a jar and no. then they fill it with gin. What? So that it won't decompose anymore. I'm out. Because they recognized it as John Hayes, they go and ask Catherine. And Catherine says that John's away on business. Mm-hmm. But a friend of John's, Mr. Ashby, doesn't buy that excuse for a few reasons. He happens to do business with John, so he's pretty up to date on oh, what John's business is. No business trips lined up. Yeah. He also has an important business meeting, I suppose, with John that he knows John won't miss. Oh. And he's also recognized John's head on the 
stinking wooden stick. <laughs> so he's not loving this. And so she says, okay, okay, all right, all right. So she like pulls him in close. John got in a fight and he actually killed a man and he's fled the country. He gave the widow hush money and he's gone to Portugal. That's what oh, she says. His head's on a stick. Right. She's ignoring me. She's just glossing over that. So Ashby doesn't believe her because, like you said, the head. And he goes to the police. And this is now it's the end of March. So Ashby brings the law back to the Hayes household where they find Catherine and oh. Billings in bed together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. The two are immediately arrested. Wood is nowhere to be found at the moment. And they also arrest the poor noise lady. Because they don't know. No. <laughs> she, they have her for half a second. And she's like, I just thought it was loud. And then they let her go. <laughs> but she's in the mix loud. for a minute. By April 16th, a coroner's inquest is officially opened. By this time, Wood has returned to London, and he's also arrested. He immediately is like, oh, my God, let me tell you everything, because he can't <gasps> handle the guilt. Oh, it's another one. What, what's the name? Goldine. Yeah. He says it was Catherine's idea, and she gave them money to take John out to get him drunk, and that Billings was the one who followed him into the bedroom and killed him. Wood dismembered the body, and Billings so and Catherine completely reject this story. They say, no, they're innocent. Wood is lying. Oh, no. So they have John's head in a jar, as we know. Mm. It's preserved, and they want Catherine to touch it. Why? Because there's a belief at this time that if the guilty party touches the dead body, then it will bleed spontaneously and show the guilt. Why are people so dumb? This like, is what called... stupid shit are we doing right now like that? Jesus. This is called cruentation, and it was a medieval practice oh, yeah, that medieval, all right. happened. And, like some, yeah, They held on to it for a minute. Apparently, the story goes, there was a victim, and there were several people who could have done it like in the moment, and so all of them laid a hand on the body, and when the guilty party happened to lay the hand on the body, the corpse had a, a rush of blood come out of his nose. That's disgusting. Which freaked the guy out, and then he instantly confessed. So they were like, well, this obviously works. We should do yeah. this all the time. That's a great sample size, guys. I know. Yeah. <laughs> sample size of one. <laughs> that guy was probably so scared, you know, coincidence. But anyway, so that's what that's what's going on. And so Catherine knows this, and she uses it to her advantage. So they give her the head in the jar, and she just is fawning all over it. Because, I mean, she doesn't know the scientific backing, but I don't think a lot of blood's going to be coming out of a head that's been in the elements for a week and then put in gin. I think she's probably in the clear. Mm. So she's holding it, sobbing, right? Nothing's happening to say that she's guilty. Uh, and she's kiss wildly kissing the jar. And then they say, well, Please stop. why don't we take it out and you can get a better look? No. And they take it out, and she no. continues to kiss it. No, no, yeah. no, yeah. Mm-hmm. no. Yes. I'm retiring. <laughs> From podcasting? Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, man. So all three. Oh, can you imagine? It no, I know. It's six days decayed, okay, and now it tastes like gin. But oh, my God. That's a worse nightmare. Yeah. I mean, and she knows like Stop. that she did it. I'm getting nauseous. Oh, I'm going to ruin this tea. <sighs> These three are not in good shape, right? Catherine is way worse off than Billings and Wood, though. Yeah, because she's just made out with a corpse, a dismembered well, head. That aside, remember at this time, killing your husband is considered petty treason. And the punishment for that is being petty burned treason. at the stake. Oof. So because at this time men are considered more valuable than women, killing them is killing the master of the house and it is considered worse than murder. The same punishment would be given if a slave killed his or her master or if an inferior killed his or her superior. Hmm. Okay. And like I said, women are burned. Men are your favorite, drawn and quartered. Remember you went into pretty in-depth in the Aqua Tafana episode. I did. Yeah, so it's a much more brutal punishment than what Wood and Billings are facing. They are facing execution as well, but it would be by hanging. Yeah. 
It's better, I guess. We also talked about this, about the petty treason in the Marie Maria Manning episode because it had just, she just kind of missed the cutoff for oh, that. It yeah. stopped in the early 1800s, but this method of execution stopped before that. Now, this is an excerpt from the old Bailey records, and this is Catherine's charges. This is, I ha- this is amazing. Well, it's not amazing. It's terrible, but... And if murder in general be one of the most heinous sins, then in proportion of the murderer of one's nearer and dearest relation must still be a greater sin than common murder. And not only of one who is most nearly related, but also who by the laws of God and man is a superior person in power and honor. For that the husband is called the head of the wife, her Lord, and therefore the laws of this kingdom have wisely declared it to be a greater crime. And affixed a severer punishment upon a wife's murdering her husband than upon other murderers. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> oh, you hate it. She's facing some pretty tough punishment, and she doubles down on her innocence. She's like, hey, the men did it. I did hold a candle for this dismemberment, but the act was already done. That's all I did. And she says, besides, it wasn't even really us. It wasn't our fault because the devil was there. Okay. So viable fourth suspect is now in the mix. Oh, my God. And then she starts talking about John. She says that John was a bad husband, that she often did not have enough food, that he beat her, that she's had broken ribs, broken bones, that he refused to call a midwife when she was pregnant, that he killed two of her children that she gave birth to and buried them under a tree. You're sleeping with one of them, bro. She... She, I know, it really is hard for her to be credible when that's happening. <laughs> she claimed that one night John came home and beat her so badly that she was in agony and Billings witnessed it. So he wanted to protect Catherine and Wood was willing to do it for money because she said she'd hand over money after it was done. And they had dismembered John because they were hoping to fit him in a trunk, but he was too tall, and that didn't work, so they just went for the pond. There's the trunk. Yeah, Stop I know. with the trunks. I know. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good look. And they found his body real quick, by the way, after the head. So, like I said, if, if the men are found guilty, death by hanging. Now, Wood has already pled guilty. This is an excerpt from their court record. Thomas Billings and Thomas Wood were indicted for the murder of John Hayes, the former, by striking and bruising the said John Hayes on the hinder part of the head with a hatchet on the 1st of March last, of which he instantly died. He didn't. Well, they don't know the, they know the deeds. but Now, Thomas Billings says in court that he thought Catherine was a distant relative, but he says at some point she told him she was his mother. I really want to know at what point. They're still sleeping together. It makes a difference. Like, did she tell you that when she saw you on her doorstep? Did she tell you that as she's being carted off to jail? Because those are two very different moments. Oh, this is just awful. Now, way. the rumor mill thought that Billing's father was actually a local tanner, but the court records list him as John's son. So he didn't know that. And then he killed his own father, potentially. Oh, my God. He's Oedipus in real life. Oedipus yeah. sleeps with his mom and kills his dad. And he backs Catherine's version of events, saying that John was mean to her and threatened to kill her. But he says he instantly regretted killing John Hayes. The second it was over, he just wept, and he wished he had not done it. I mean, I could believe that. Yeah. The court records are really big on remorse. You know, religion's a bit of a thing in this time period, so it matters big time how remorseful you you appear. And Wood seems hands down the most upset by what has been done, but he's also the most religious, so I I wonder, too, if maybe he had the best way to convey it that Mm. would work in those times. Yeah. Wood actually wrote a letter to his cousin explaining what had happened, and it's (gasps) the, the Ipswich Journal published it. Wow. Is, is which? I don't know how you say it. I wonder, you know how Greenwich Village in New York is, isn't it spelled Greenwich? Anyways, just throwing a whole nother boomerang into that. So you think it's Ipich? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, 
doesn't matter. So he starts the letter with, I beg and pray heartily day and night that the just God of heaven will pardon the great offenses which have been committed in his sight to our fellow creatures so rashly. I allow myself to be a vile sinner in being concerned in that wicked crime. But since it cannot be recalled, I hope the great God of heaven will be merciful unto me, a poor and miserable wretch. It is a great trouble to me that I should so disgrace my honest parents and friends and brought this shameful death. And that, so that's how he's writing the letter. So I imagine that's how he's talking in court. Yeah. He's claiming that he didn't have an actual part in the murder. And in the letter, it's a little unclear. He kind of glosses over some details where I would have questions. But he said that as soon as he moved in, Catherine had started in with this plan and he had said no every time. No, no, no. And then he'd gone out of town and he makes it seem like he arrived home and they were already at the bar. Like it was already happening. Oh. And he, it, he makes it seem like maybe he didn't know. But my question, my follow-up questions to him would have been, well, you had to kind of guess that maybe it was happening in that moment, right? And you didn't do anything to stop it because he knew that they wanted to kill him. <sighs> He said that he watched John get drunk and then drunk. John went to bed and then Billings followed him. I mean, it, it's possible that this is what happened. Yeah. And it could also be that he thinks they're not actually going to do it. Oh. Right? But what's interesting I noticed in the letter is every time somebody else did something, he would name them, like Billings did it or Catherine said this. But every time he was involved in something, he would say, we. Interesting. So that's how you could kind of tell what he actually did and what he didn't, I think. He ah. would say, Billings hit him on the head. We cut off his head. Got it. So he would – I doubt that Billings actually did any of that because he's – Wood is the butcher. Okay. This might be a weird question. Mm -hmm. um, is dismembering a body a crime? Would it be an obstruction of justice? Is that like, how would you lay, what is the charge there? I'm wondering, you know? Yeah, I don't know. So he says, Wood continues to say that Catherine was really the mastermind of everything. Yeah. As soon as the deed was over, she's the one who said, cut off his head so they can't identify it, go put it in the river. And then she cleaned up the bedroom. She's the one the next day who said, we need to fit his body into a trunk, get it to fit, didn't fit, pond. Now, he also says, and I quote, the world says she was my whore, but I vow to God she never was. And I have to kind of uh, believe him because as the story was progressing and I was reading this, I thought, you know, they never mentioned in any of the court or, or trial testimonies that she was involved with Wood. And I feel like at that point they would have been all over it. I These are you the said newspapers. She was. That's what the newspapers were reporting. Hmm. But it was never in the court transcript and i feel at that point they would have loved anything to make her appear yeah more more terrible he says they weren't and she he wasn't even there that long so it i don't was know a border right yeah i don't know if they were or not i mean it doesn't matter at that point now the letter ends with wood wishing someone from his family would come see him one last time before he's put to death and he mm -hmm. signs it an unfortunate sinner thomas wood oh i have a pity party yeah, well, he's he's really painted himself into a corner there. Yeah, he's not uh, going well. chopped himself to a corner, rather. Yeah, and the court states that Billings was more stoic, and they just they actually describe him as hard hearted. That mm. might be because he just found out he killed his father and slept with his mother. He might be in <laughs> shock. Doesn't he stab his eyes out? I'm trying to think of Oedipus. Anyways, they say that Billings also was showing remorse, just not as much as would and then there's Catherine, who apparently has no concern for any of this except occasionally being upset that poor billings and wood were in such a in such a jam because of her <sighs> and the first signs of remorse don't become present until she realizes she's going to be burned alive <laughs> and then she starts begging for just a different way to die yeah i'm with you girl the trial goes on everybody's found guilty Wood was actually spared a public execution because he died of jail fever before it could happen. Oh. Which we know from the Pendle Witch episode yeah. is not a great way to go. No, it's not. Yeah. And like I said, at this point, Catherine is just begging for humanity. I mean, she's really like, I've done something awful. Like, I get it. Okay, I'm, I fully understand. But could you please not burn me? Yeah, that's tough. 
Yeah. And she even tries to take poison, but some dum-dum in the cell with her finds the vial, puts it to her lips, burns her lips, and then drops the vial and breaks it. So that's out for Catherine. Good job. I know. Hey, come on, lady. Stay on your side of the cell. So on May 9th, 1726, a crowd, of course, is forming for this execution. I just, I'll never understand that. It's so gross. It's for Catherine and Thomas Billings, but they are not mm. the only two prisoners sentenced to death. There's several other men who will join Billings. Oh. And, and I have to mention these crimes because I, I you have to do just like a reality check on the time period. So Catherine and Billings are there for murder, which whether you believe in the death penalty or not, that's the worst thing. Yep. That's a bad crime. The other people are being put to death for five of them for some sort of robbery and three of them for sodomy. Are you serious? Because they had sex with a man. Yes. Ugh, so over people. Incredibly dangerous time period. Yeah, it's really awful. And this kind of danger is still real for people around the world. I read an article that said 69. I even read another that said 70 countries have laws against Yeah, it's pretty nasty out there. It's 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 like why, really? <laughs> why? Yeah, and there are different levels of severity, but for some people, this 1726 is mm. still a reality. I can't even imagine. So back to our gal, Catherine. They're going to burn this woman at the stakes alive. <sighs> Woo. Justice system, not the best. Yeah. And each, so each man is brought, they're, they're in a few different carts. They're brought down, you know, to where they're going to be executed with the noose on their neck and no. sitting on their own coffin. Oh my God, that's dark. You know what I would yeah, do at so, this point? I would go nuts. I would try to headbutt as much as I could to try to pass myself out. Well, one of the men, one of the poor men who was convicted of the sodomy charge, he actually escaped for a moment and fled, and it caused a whole chaos and like a, a scaffolding fell down and a bunch oh, of people wow. were injured and died. He did not get away. I'd hope they shoot me or something. So Catherine is brought on a hurdle, which is like that wooden panel like you described for oh, men yeah. who are drawn and quartered. She brought on that. And then, you know, there's a bonfire Ugh. Like the wood pile ready with a wooden stake erected out of the middle of it. And so first, though, she's forced to watch the men's execution. So she has oh. to watch her son lover die. <clears throat> and then she's brought over to the wooden stake and she's chained to it. Now, here's where it gets even worse for poor Catherine. She is also has a noose around her neck and the executioner holds it, it's fed through the wooden stake, and he holds it on the other side, I think, so no one else can see it, I guess. It's got to be a bad feeling. And basically, when the fire starts, he just pulls it real tight, so at least she passes out. Oh, that's great. Right, right. That's great. So the fire starts, and she start. her arms are free. Like, her body's changed, but her, changed, but her arms are free. So she starts, like, trying to fan the flames away, and she starts begging for the executioner, like, pull the rope, pull the rope, pull the rope. Yeah. I don't know what she was saying exactly, but that's what she's getting at. And as he goes to pull it for her, the wind shifts and the flames either burn his hands or burn the rope and he drops the rope. <gasps> oh, no. And so now she is engulfed in flames no. and screaming for okay. mercy. Yeah, okay. Details. So the executioner no, actually, to his credit, he like gets as close as he can. He picks up a block of wood and he throws it at her to knock her out. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, it okay. actually probably killed her because the newspaper reported that brains were plentiful. Okay. The details yeah. are a bit much right now. <laughs> it's, it's, man, the 1700s are vicious. Yeah. People are always like, oh, like, so hard to survive these days. Or like, it's a tough time, scary times. I'm like, this is the best time to be alive in oh, all of history gosh. is yeah. modern day. There's yeah. no question. Like, yeah, things are tough for everybody and, like, certain populations way more, but, man, rough yeah. times back then in so many different ways. It is so dangerous for so many people yeah. and, like, the consequences scrape, are terrible. Step on a nail even, die tetanus. Ooh. And then her body burns. It takes, like, an hour before she's ashes. And then they take TMI. Billing's body and they put it in one of those hanging cages on the main road oh. as a deterrent. 
for anybody who I guess wants to kill their father and sleep with their mother. Jeez. What is that called? Petricide? Yeah. That's what, yeah, exactly. That was in the newspaper a bunch. Yeah. I don't think John was actually his father because there are lots of rumors that it was a local tanner, which seems to be held on to really strong. How do they know it's her her son? She said it was. So, I mean, I How guess it she might know? not be. Didn't she drop him off at a firehouse when she, he was born? <laughs> not a firehouse, but she oh. probably she probably knew where, like, kept tabs on him. You know, you, you drop him off at a certain house. It's not like she went 500 miles east. Yeah, that's she can true. Only, she can only walk so far, so it's pretty close. <laughs> well, they moved to London, no? And the, they probably heard what happened up to him. She said he, he thought she was a distant relative, so maybe they were in contact. Fucking weird. She's, Catherine's the one who said John was the father. And that, like, I don't feel like we can trust Catherine at this point in time. No, she's a And I don't know, maybe Kat, also Catherine probably doesn't know if the other rumors are true. But she's probably saying that hoping, at that point, she's hoping desperately that they'll take pity on her and go with another form of execution. Yeah, I guess. So she's probably trying to appear as good as she can. And I, I mean, she's already in the hole quite a bit with, um, you know, everything. Yeah. So she's probably trying. She was like, I swear it's John's name, but I never told him. And as soon as Billings found that out, he was, he turned on Catherine and he was disgusted. But he did say that John beat Catherine. So, I mean, it also is 1726. So yeah, they think everything can be true. Uh, yeah. So everything can be true. I don't know if I believe John killed their children. Yeah, that was, that's excessive. I'm not sure. They sent somebody to go dig under the trees, but nothing was reported if it was found or not. Huh. Yeah, it's just yucky all around. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. I hate all I, of the details. I can't, I'm having a real hard time with, like, when did Billings know? When were you clued in? When, when do you drop to that the, bomb? To the familial connection? Yeah, being like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm your long-lost mother. Is this how you thought our reunion would go? Like, when do you sneak that into conversation? Yeah, I'm going to choose not to think about that. Well, it really, like, how much did he know? Deleting it from my memory banks. Um, what do, I mean, what do you think? Do you think Wood was more involved than he said? Do you think he was the only one telling the truth? What do you think is going on? What do you think actually happened that night? I mean, I definitely think he did the dismembering because he's experienced there. I don't know. I don't know. I think he probably, like, did go out with them and drink, but I think if he was going to kill him, he would have done it right the first time. Yeah. Well, at one point, Billing said that Wood actually slit his throat, but I – That he said been he, on the body. He said it was after that he beheaded him, so that yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, I don't – Everything's I'm disgusting. not a huge fan – of Catherine? You know, sometimes you can get kind of like see where they're coming from. Nope. Not at all. Everything's wrong so, and I hate it. Something's not a lot a lot's not right here. It's really bad. Ugh. I do feel so much empathy for all the other people who had to face those executions during that yeah, time man. period. It's terrible. Oh, gosh. And they're public. And I mean, this yeah. is I mean, he you know, you like you stole a couple coins and now you're sentenced to death. Yeah, that's a, a bit rough. Oh my gosh. Or you're just being who you are and that's so unsafe. Yeah. That they just come. Like that one is so disgusting to me. It's heinous. Ugh. I, People are the worst generally. Yeah. Power is really dangerous at that point in time. Well, power is always dangerous. I'm going to skip the time travel to the early 1700s. Yeah. Hard pass. When is Outlander? 1745. How did Claire survive? Let's be honest. I don't know. World War II nurse, I guess, picked up some handy yep, skills. But I meant more like with her sass. How oh, she yeah. Got... She, I mean, let's, it's not realistic. No. No. She'd have been done so. All right. Well, do you have any last words? <sighs> if you're trying to get rid of a body, don't put it in a body of water. But you told B the trunk people bury to put it, it in water. Okay. Bury it is the best way to do it, I think. The easiest way to get rid of a body is to just let it walk right on out of a room because you didn't kill it. 
Yeah, I was. I didn't know where you're going with that, and I thought <laughs> I was like necromancy. But I agree. Just with run you. away. Please don't kill people. Maybe. Yeah, th- the world is such a big place. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Why don't you go to Portugal, Catherine? Yeah, Catherine. Yeah, take your son Portugal. and your boyfriend and get out of here. I hear it's a beautiful place. <laughs> Great beaches. Yeah, maybe reconsider that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if they only had a Portugal brochure, all of this would have Well, been. they don't have pictures, clearly. Oh, fuck. But maybe they, they have just... sketches. When's Michelangelo doing his shit? They just put Portugal on a wooden stake in the center of town. They was all going to have been avoided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, this was a terrible episode. Like, oh my god, the details in it. Yeah, the only reason I didn't earmuff you this time around is because it was so long ago. Like, there seems to be for that, you a real no. That really helped. Like, I love history, obviously, and I love historical stories, and so there, it feels less real. Like, yeah, a it, it's so long ago that. Like the trauma of it is hopefully passed from the generations. Yeah, and there B, aren't like, victims. They're alive, almost yes. different people back then because of how they lived and the the framework of the society and their and their life. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I definitely don't want murder to happen in any time period, but it is easier to uh, digest. Yeah. Exactly. If this was, if any of this, I wouldn't even have been able to cover this story no, if it was two hundred years earlier or yeah. later. I mean, 200 years later. Yeah, later. Yeah, I would have just been like, nope, she can't hang with that. That's good. She's not going to do it anymore if I tell her that happened in 19, <laughs> 1960. Okay, well, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Tea Time Crimes. You can email us at Tea Time Crimes at gmail.com. Drop us a note. And rate, review, please support the show. By yes, it really helps get the word out. She loves to say that. Please help us support the show where you can. And thank you so much for listening. Alana, who should listen today before we peace out? Oh, wow. Um, butchers, tailors, mothers, sons who are not having an inappropriate relationship. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, Portuguese people. How about and photographers? You're really coming in handy, guys. Oh, Thank you for your work. Yes. And no, artists. Artists could have solved a lot of problems and not been so gross. <laughs> Was there not paper available? There's absolutely art in that time period. I know. Sketch it on a building. Come on. Yeah. Who thought it was like, this is the solution. I got it. Yeah. This is yeah. what we'll do. We're not. That's not okay. All right. That's it. We got to get away from this Ugh. floating head. Okay, thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Don't murder. Good sage advice.